Bonjour à tous, euh, donc là je suis en ce moment chez Lucas, un polonais assez connu localement qui a créé une forêt jardin il y a 20 ans, donc il a acheté environ euh, 20 hectares de terrain dans la montagne qu'il a transformé en forêt jardin, donc avec, euh, il a, en fait il a gardé la forêt d'origine et il a implanté environ 600 espèces de plantes qui viennent de régions euh, proches ou de l'étranger et il a une vision de, de la forêt qui est assez intéressante et je vous laisse la découvrir, c'est très intéressant notamment pour, euh, j'ai pensé au BTS GPN qui auront une vision du, de la gestion d'une forêt par l'homme assez intéressante. A bientôt. Uh, this place was bought 20 years ago. It's a complex of abandoned arable fields and meadows which belonged to retired farmers and it was sold by the state. And then I was a PhD student when I bought it and I dreamed of managing the forest by myself and not only doing statistics. And uh, I got some prize and I bought it and I started planting trees and cutting some of the land and leaving some abandoned and putting a lot of native flora. So the ground layer is mainly native or like maybe species from the neighboring country which survive without much cultivation some of it is abandoned we are sitting in a kind of like a wooded meadow so it's a shaded area but which is full of spring flowers primro primrose and um, snowdrops and things in spring and now it's just cut once a year to to remove the black blackberries and uh, I leave some of the trees growing and uh, I love it wild edible plants and uh, a lot of them are spontaneous here but also a lot I plant and let them spread and I plant a lot of edible fruit trees I like uh, sorbus, I don't know the French name, rowan, yeah, different rowan service tree sorbus, um, celtis, uh, euglans, walnuts how, how many plants did you bring from outside? I uh, brought from outside about 700 species of plants 400 species of trees and larger shrubs and 300 of um, other small plants. I have shiitake here and you see the auricularia coming out, but dry. Ah, yeah, here. Yeah, this is the Chinese, but it's native in Europe, so ah, okay. it grows on Sambucus migran, ground elder. So I collect ground elder branches, it grows naturally. Yeah. And I make these piles and then it's easy for me to collect them from the home. And this I drilled. I drilled the holes and I put the spores inside. But the idea is like a, the idea of an English landscape park. So a person walking and collecting mushrooms would never realize it's a managed place. So not much regularity, no labels, everything is just hidden. Sometimes I forget about things and discover them 10 years later. The record was I, I discovered Fraxinus ornus, a tree which I dug out in Parc Guel in Barcelona in 1997 and I discovered it three years ago growing in my forest. I forgot about it and it grew into a tree and I just didn't notice. And I also bring a lot of seeds and I just uh, sprinkle them around like when I see some uh, Turkish hazel, Corylus colurna, I always fill my pockets and then throw these hazels And I discovered already five trees from throwing seeds from my pocket without even planting. And like uh, from the last trip in Hungary, I also bought a big sack of acorns. And I was just yes, uh, yesterday morning going from place to place, which I like a bird, thinking that this is the right place for an acorn and just planting one acorn here, one acorn there. Yeah. And actually a lot of it comes out, some percentage, you know you are surprised. So then if something like this comes out, I just cut the trees around. I do something like, which is called halo. So if there is some tree in the forest which I like, because it's beautiful, because it's blossoms, because it has fruit, because it's an oak, for example, I cut the trees around it. So I 
create space for it. Yeah. The, the mountain is divided mentally. I don't have a map of it yet. I, maybe I should. Uh, into plots of about two, two, three thousand square meters, which are easy to manage if you cut them because you can bring a tractor and a tractor can cut it in half an hour. And some of the plots are open grassland, some of the plots are forest, some of the plots are coppice forest, which I cut every 10 years. Some of the plots are wooded meadow, so there would be, I don't know, 10, 10 20 trees and the guy would come with a, with a scythe and cut it. So it's a mosaic of um, a few types of uh, vegetation. Yeah? And some of the meadows are cut early in June, some in July or August. So also it gives a different vegetation because different cutting regime. And now do you want to do it for you or for people, for the landscape? No, it didn't change. Actually the aim and the main principles haven't changed at all for 20 years. This is amazing. That I would change the aim if I if I if I saw the reason, but I always wanted to be an extensive forest where you don't uh, you don't do much work. And the idea is that this place gives me freedom. So I like doing things, but to a certain extent. And I allow myself to do as much as I can as I want to do. Yeah. So if suddenly. I have, I'm ill or if I can't do things, I will let this forest grow and just let it overgrow because that's nature. But because I have energy, I will exert as much influence as I can, but without the kind of Taoist thinking, just so that the energy flows, that when I go here, I come with joy, yeah? not as a laborer. I come I can, I can, I usually do one, one hour of work a day, but I, I usually do some work, yeah. So it's mainly for you? For this me, it's a very, it's an intimate interaction between me and, and the nature. But then I think that maybe one day, I hope my grand, grandchildren or, you know, some people who inherit this place will, uh, will kind of respect it, yeah. So I told my children that, because they are not interested in botany, that if I die, if if they manage this place, what I want from them, I will make a list of 100 trees, which are my favorite trees, and I will mark them when I'm old, and I'll tell them to just take care of them, yeah, and the rest will take care of themselves, yeah, the rest, the rest is nature, it will change, will transform, but I want these 100 trees to stay and, you know, be admired and, you know, people talking about it was planted in 1997, 1998, blah, 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 brought from China, brought from a seed on the Great Wall, brought from Hungary, brought from Italy, brought from Bulgaria, from Croatia, from France. Can you give us three examples of trees <coughs> or plants that give edible fruits with, uh, with nice uh, properties or nice anecdotes about those trees or the trees you prefer? There are many, many. I would say uh, one of the things we should plant is a black walnut, Juglas nigra. It's a walnut which grows very well in the Central European forests, comes from America, has edible nuts. They it hasn't got so much inside as the normal walnut, but it's very nice and it's very long living. So if you plant it in case of famine, war or something, it's very sturdy. It survives frost. You can have it. So I, w I also planted a lot of walnuts. I like cornus. I like the, the thing we ate. The cornus kosa, the Japanese uh, dogwood, is also very sturdy. And uh, and the uh, corn yemal, yeah, the Cornu yemal. Cor 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 cornelian cherry is also very nice. This place, you can read it in a different way. You can read it as an a tree collection. You can read it as a management kind of experiment Example. you can read it as a place for get food you can read it as a place for di di biodiversity but for me it is also like a holy place yeah because i travel a lot and i i teach once or twice a week and different regimes and i have workshops and i have things to do so the only thing which is steady in my life is coffee i have a morning coffee and sitting on the porch and drinking coffee this is the <laughs> the holy time and uh, I usually work in the morning, I have a lot of strength, so I get up and do 
you know, two, three, four hours of work, like either outside or writing some stuff. And the rest of the day is chaos. Uh, can you give an advice to young students who love nature? <laughs> I think learn, uh, learn the taxa. I meet a lot of ecology enthusiast people who are lazy or I don't know why they do it, but they don't know plants and animals. Yeah, so they have a general idea. So I would say concentrate on the details instead of talking about permaculture, ecology, something. Just do one thing. Plant a courgette. Take some seeds of pumpkin and plant them. Yeah. And also when you learn things, you cannot learn everything at the same time. So ask someone to teach you how to do one thing. I don't know. How to plant a potato. One potato. How to plant a pumpkin. Yeah. How to plant a tree. Yeah. To know the trees. And then and then it comes gradually. Yeah? I was I was obsessed by plants since I was three. So I'm 45, so 42 years of learning, yeah. So then you learn things, yeah, but, it, but it's, it's a long process.